It's Thursday and welcome to Palace Confidential, your weekly look at all things royal, brought to you from the Mail's HQ in Kensington. I'm Jo Elvin and joining me on the show today is royal biographer Angela Levin, veteran royal writer and broadcaster Robert Jobson and the Daily Mail's diary editor Richard Eden. Great to see you all. Robert, we're going to start with you. Yeah, Speculation has been building this week about Prince Harry's biography. We've been talking about this a lot on the show. We heard it wouldn't be out this week, but now reports from America suggest that it will? Well, the odd thing is the official um, uh, PR statement said that it will be out in the last quarter of, uh, of this year, and it, they made a big deal about that and they announced it, press release and everything. The Just list for the, pub uh, the publishers put out a list of all the forthcoming major biographies or major books that they're going to be bringing out and they'd actually announced it so um, previously so I was surprised when it wasn't on there and also I, th I think maybe they're just um, uh, maybe there's some, some fun and games behind the scenes they know they're going to bring the book out New York seems to suggest in the in the newspapers there it's coming out and maybe they're just going for a bit more publicity or there's being checked by lawyers. We don't know. Well, they, they did <laughs> say... well one of my questions is, is it, is it completed? Has he finished writing it? Well, I don't think he's doing an awful lot of typing. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> and yeah. I think that the ghostwriter has been probably busy on it for, oh, for a long, long time, from yeah. what we understand. So maybe, just maybe with all the, the glasnost that just went over, apparently happened at the Jubilee, um, bits are being changed. We don't know. Uh -huh. And Angela, what do you imagine are the areas that he would be talking about that might concern the palace? Well, I could stay here all day and tell you them. I mean, do really, it, it. what yeah. it is, is is washing dirty linen in public. Do you think and that it that's, can be that's true? Small things. Well, he's supposed to be getting about £13 million for it, so they want a story, and they won't want how lovely everything is, because that's <laughs> not going to work either, is it? Um, and I think that um, they, they, it could be a small argument between people that he would blow up. It could be um, revealing secrets about yeah. security it could be almost anything, an A to Z of what he, he's complaining about. Um, but it's, it's the principle of the thing that you don't really re watch the dirty... It's because it's him, isn't it? You know, yeah. If it was a biography that I'd written or you'd written and it's from someone, but well, this is any little thing that he's said that's that's be, exactly becomes it. the story, that's you know, whatever yes, it is. That would be such an enjoyable format, just an A to Z, literally, of the things that have annoyed Harry about the palace. Yes. <laughs> well, the rumours are, of course, that they, he's going to attack Camilla in the book, but we don't know whether that's true at all. Um, and it, I think it's very difficult. It's more like he's going to attack the press, I think. No, the, the, well, he'll attack the press. Yeah. Do you think, Richard, perhaps he's taking you know, like the Beyonce route on Spotify where we don't hear months in advance that there's an album dropping, just all of a sudden, poof, there it is. Do you think that that's what he'll Well, do? it certainly adds to the impact. We've had a, a series of stories that the publication was likely to be delayed or maybe even um, put off altogether. But then the New York Post reported this week mm. from quoting publishing sources in New York saying it's going ahead, it's going to be this autumn, and it will include what they described as a series of explosive truth bombs. Well, it remains to be seen what they are. It's Penguin Random House, and they will want to get value for, for money. Yeah. According to the New York Post, there's going to be a lot of focus on his childhood, and there'll be stories that no one knows about, and there'll be plenty of other stuff that we've heard about um, from the outside, but to hear it from him himself will really be something else, I think. How serious, Robert, do you think the impact will be felt here? Oh, they did huge, the impact. I mean, the funny thing is, though, when I did a book with Ken Morstone as bodyguard, who was with him since, when he was, since he was about four or something, and so we had a lot of stories about his childhood, which is, you know, because he had a policeman with him most of the time, and most of the time it was Ken or yeah. the others. So a lot of those stories will be, he won't remember, but they've already been re reported, and they were quite funny. Uh, how he used to drive around in a Range Rover and he smashed it, crashed <laughs> When he was about three or five years old, he was on the, on the sitting on the bodyguard's lap and crashed into a wall. And just a, he used to be held up against... Johnny uh, Japes. He used to be, he, he's, the only way they could control him as a little boy was to... His nanny used to pin him up, but she was quite a, a big lady, he used to pin him up against the wall with her girth as he would, like, be frantically... No, 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 no we're going to be he hearing about my, my nanny hell, aren't we? Yeah. But in here one time, um, he just asked for the walkie-talkie the, the, oh, he did, yeah, okay, and he, he went up yeah. and he walked out the house well, and he, he walked along records, and yeah. he yes he, he actually walked out of his he, home. What he said he was going to go and see his aunt, Lady Jane Fellows, who was living in the old barracks, 
and then Ken forgot about her, yeah. compl him completely, and then the next thing you know, he was walking on his own down Kensington Hyde Street. Yeah. He, he said, where are you, Harry? He said, I'm just outside Tower Records. He said, get yeah. yourself back there, quick. Because he, he was wandering yeah. around and... But those are normal, side. naughty little boys, yeah, they're, they're, they're not be actually going to earn into the, a load to the of money. I mean, you know, never being the allowed the day, I think it's difficult for a kid to remember what he was up to anyway. It's going to be the more up-to-date stuff that's going to be the explosive stuff. It's going to be what, what happened in the row, but who made who cry, if that's going to be in, in, in the piece, who knows? You know, with the Megan and um, Kate whole scenario, I'm sure those things will be, if they are addressed at all, then um, will cause major... I think major it'll be all about him, though, well, What do you think, Angela? I wanted to ask you, you've, you've interviewed Harry for a yeah. book that you've yeah, written. Yeah, with him and a lot, yes. What, do you think there's a risk that he might not realise some things that he's saying are incendiary? Well, it's very difficult to know. I think that he is now so bitter and resentful that he will say uh, what he really feels and see things that he accepted years ago as now as being absolutely dreadful. I think he really wants to show his power over William because he was fed up with being the spare rather than the heir. Mm. And um, that he... He, I think he does know. I think he's got a lot of poison running in his blood now about what he feels about his background and his family. And I think he doesn't mind if he hurts people because he feels that um, he's been hurt by them. A lot of poison running in his mm. blood. Richard, how does that sit with the news this week that Harry will be addressing the UN? This is really interesting. He's going to be giving the um, lecture or the speech on Nelson Mandela Day next Monday. Um, it's not quite clear why or how this has been arranged. <laughs> um, he, he never met Nelson Mandela. Um, he did meet um, Mandela's widow, I think, with, with Meghan. Um, yeah. But I presume he'll be talking about racism or these type of issues. Um, but it, it won't be the first visit to um, the UN for him. Richard, you would have seen on Twitter it, it did cause quite a storm with people resurrecting the old unfortunate pictures of Harry dressed as a Nazi and all this sort of thing. And, it's like, and now the, some people are upset that he will be apparently talking about racism at well, the UN. Well, I think it would Quite. be a good opportunity for Harry to talk about his um, things he's done wrong, really, when it comes to race, because he's never really addressed that, ob obliquely, perhaps, but he's never sort of stood up and said, look, I'm sorry for the things I did, for being very rude, using racial terms about his colleagues in the army. Well, you the story know. I broke, and that was, he never really did apologise. Mm. No, but he's never he, really addressed that. So but before... he feels that Meghan has helped him to realise, doesn't mm. he? He said quite early on in their relationship that um, she's shown him where he'd gone wrong and he was incredibly grateful well maybe we'll that. hear more of that in this speech but maybe she'll speak too we will watch that space with interest but for now we'll move on the duchess of cornwall this week turns 75 many happy returns from all of us here at palace confidential but who better to talk about her than one of her best friends in the whole wide world and i mean of course the daily mail's royal editor rebecca english Rebecca, welcome. We've had documentaries, we've had lunches, magazine editing. But what have been your highlights of Camilla's celebrations? Very funny, Joe. What a witch you are. Um, that said, I was hoping to be with you in the office today to discuss all things Camilla, uh, but I've now got to race to Clarence House to uh, do an engagement with her. So, you know, read into that what you will. Uh, and on the subject of Camilla and her 75th birthday, um, anyone who's got an interest in the Duchess of Cornwall or the royal family in general, I would really advise you to have a look at our mailplus.co.uk website on Friday afternoon and grab a copy of Saturday's Daily Mail. I'm planning something very special around her 75th birthday. I can't give too much away at the moment, but I think uh, it'll be of great interest to, uh, to royal watchers. Um, and yes, we have seen a slew of stuff this week, obviously all very, very very complimentary but uh, actually I think my uh, my favorite was Camilla's Country Life the ITV documentary that was centered around her um, guest editorship of Country Life magazine um, very glowing but of course you don't expect these things to be anything otherwise and actually if uh, Camilla is going to be our queen consort I think it gave a very good uh, insight into what makes her tick as a woman and her particularly close relationships with her family, her sister Annabelle, uh, which I think are absolutely central to who she is as a person. I really enjoyed that one. 
You've got to know her a bit as a royal over the past few years. You seem to be everywhere she is in the world. How do you think she's changed? The funny thing is, I don't think she's changed at all, actually. But what I think has changed is her willingness to let her guard down and let people see the real Camilla, which actually is very funny, is very warm, is very witty. You know, she's she's sharp, she's very well read. Um, and I think she's more willing now to, to let people see that. Um, I have to say there's one anecdote I've got that I think kind of illustrates the, the change over the years. And in, in the early days of their marriage, I was with the Prince of Wales and the Duchess of Cornwall in Canada on an official tour. And I had to leave it early to come home and do some work on my bathroom before the builders got in. And uh, I was at reception. I literally had my suitcase with me. I was about to cover my last job and then literally jump in a taxi and head back to the UK. And she came up to me and I hadn't spoken to her very much at this point. And she said, oh, Rebecca, nice to meet you, Camilla. And she said, I I've heard a rumour. Is it true you're leaving our tour to go home and do your bathroom? And she kind of looked at me a bit puzzled and went, I haven't you got a husband that would do that? And I kind of instinctively laughed and said, well, would you trust your husband with the bathroom? And then I kind of giggled because I was a bit like, and I kind of said, well, no, clearly you wouldn't. He's the Prince of Wales. And we kind of laughed and it broke the ice a bit. And, and she said to me, oh, I'm really sorry to hear that you're going because I don't think people realise how terrifying doing this job is. You know, you get out of a car and there's flashlights going off everywhere and there's a sea of faces. And occasionally it's nice to just catch the eye of somebody you recognise. And it just makes it feel a little bit less intimidating. And I think that's something w that would surprise people who felt that this is what Camilla wanted all along, because actually I think the truth of it is that she isn't. She didn't, she, she didn't want the whole monarchy, she didn't want the Queen Consort, but what she wanted to be was with the man she loved. And unfortunately for her, that all comes with the job. Um, so I think what she's done is she has um, learned to accept it, and she's she's very determined and she's decided, look, if I'm going to do this job, I, I'm going to do it well. And I think that's what people have seen change over the years. And finally, a quick word on the Queen. She's been back doing investitures. Yeah, we've seen the Queen conduct a number of video investitures this week, but also actually in person. And on Tuesday, she was joined by the Prince of Wales at Windsor Castle, where she awarded the NHS, the National Health Service, as an organisation, the George Cross, which is the highest uh, order of uh, gallantry that we can give in this country for civilian or non-combat bravery. And that was to mark the NHS's 74 years of service to this country, but particularly during the COVID pandemic. And she seemed to be on really great form. She was still using her walking stick, but I think we're, we're quite used to that by now, but she seemed on particularly good form. Um, we've got nothing uh, forward facing like that in the diary uh, for a bit, but that's not to say we won't see her again before she heads off to uh, Balmoral for the summer. Let's bring my panel back in now. And Angela, you have a book coming out about Camilla, um, and that's coming out soon. And tell us, what was the idea behind it? Well, I met her first in 2015. I spent about three months with her. And um, I was very surprised about how good she was with people. We went to a, a rape center, which I thought was an extraordinary thing to be asked to go to. And she really was absolutely brilliant. It's not easy to talk to girls like that. And I thought she was very brilliant. And I had it in my head, I'd like to write a biography of her. Um, then time went on and things, but it was really, Prince Harry's um, rudeness and the way he left um, the palace, plus the crown on Netflix, that made me think that it was the right time to do that. Mm. And so um, that's, that's what's happened. I spent a lot of time writing 94,000 words. And shall I tell you the title? Yes, please. It's called Camilla, Duchess of Cornwall, um, Outcast to Future queen consort. I mean, it's extraordinary, isn't it, the journey well, that the she's journey, still on? It's been a fascinating journey yeah. for me to follow what's been going on and all the people who have talked about her on the way. And it, it, it is quite extraordinary how she has managed that and changed herself and, as we all know, changed her life when she was 57. The more she does, the more she likes. And although she's very... Um, 
careful that he leads and she sometimes walks slightly behind him, not very much. When she's on her own and she does um, visits, uh, she's extraordinarily strong and powerful and knows exactly what she wants to do. She seems always very charismatic to me. Robert, I believe you broke the story about Camilla and Charles when they were to marry. But how do you think Camilla taking on an official role has impacted Charles? Yeah, in the midst, midst of time, I wrote about 2005, that story. Um, yeah, um, I think that it's made Charles a, a far more relaxed um, person in public. I think it was awful. I remember when he was really that period where he, she couldn't really be acknowledged and he was travelling the world. He, he, you know, he was always a workaholic. I think he needs her. He's someone they can, at the end of the day, they can have a laugh about a subject and they can uh, chat about things. And be, he's a far more relaxed in the way he does things. I remember we were on the Voyager plane the other, not that long ago and he, I'd never really seen him without a shirt and tie on before and he came back and was chatting to the press, something that she would have instigated. Shirtless. Shirt and tie, he didn't have a shirt, and, <laughs> he, he did a jacket and tie, sorry. He didn't come back shirtless, he had a shirt on but no that was jacket like quite and tie. Extraordinary image going uh, to my head yeah, don't yeah. take away that yeah. image. <laughs> Although we did see that image of them walking on the beach. Um, but he um, he was very relaxed and she will come back and chat to all the media and, and you know there's certain things she'll do to liven up a situation. For example, I remember being in Christchurch and looking at whether the they'd had that um, uh, the, the, ter the terrible earthquake and the whole... Oh, yes. was a, and there was a dance company dancing. These kids were jiving and trying to live in things. So she immediately joined in, which meant that he had to join in, which were, we had pages one, to one, two and three of them dancing, which was, you know, quite unusual for two, got people in their 70s, you know. But they were, she was managed to, to... She saw that as a situation. Another time we were in, on a job in New, Australia, I think it was, and this guy, we were just... Sharpening, he was showing how to sharpen the knives. So she picked up one and started going <laughs> like that to him. And so got this great snap. And so she's very, very aware that the media are there for a reason. She's picked subjects that aren't going to make her the queen of people's hearts or the queen of hearts. They are very, very tough issues. Domestic violence and rape and all mm. of these going into prisons to try and promote people to read, to you know, education there, reading. All of these things aren't necessarily, you know, very... Um, going to win over people necessarily but that but she takes them very seriously and does a very good job from mm. what I've seen she's you know very I think she's done a terrific job yeah do you think Richard that people do the public gets to see the real Camilla now do you and do you think that there's there is widespread acceptance when, when previously there wasn't I think probably acceptance is the right word mm. that I think we journalists have sort of come to really like her and she's for many people sort of favourite member of the royal family but I don't think that's shared by the public at all so I think before they might have been actively hostile and maybe they're less hostile now but I think the problem for the royal family is they're just not very interested so the public are just not very interested in Charles and Camilla and that is a problem. You know that they sure they might. For the younger generation. Yeah, they yeah. might tolerate her, but they they don't they don't sort of love her or really care one way or another. And so, for an institution that relies on the public support, I think that's a genuine problem, and that's why we will see almost a sort of joint reign with with William and well, Catherine. Well, it's interesting, isn't it? Because she will be for all intents and purposes, a queen. What, what kind of queen do you think she will be, Angela? Well, she said um, just the other day what she was going to be when she was celebrating her birthday um, with the Oldie magazine. And she spoke a bit and she said that she felt that um, the Duke of Edinburgh was her role model and she would follow a motto that he'd said, which was, look up, look out, say little and do more. And she said that's what she's going to do. What no, a job to be stepping into, though, at you know, potentially around 80 years old. Oh, it's, it's a, yeah. a difficult job without yeah. that. I mean, you're, but she's, I think that she's very good at supporting the prince. The prince will take the lead. And um, she's very well informed, on, as Angela was saying, on all of the subjects. And she's, she's very careful not to stray beyond them. Yes. I think that's what she's good at. She's focused. She's not going to... I mean, I've been on engagement or tours with her, and then she... I remember I, you tend, I was tending to follow at the time I was writing a book on Prince Charles, so I'd follow him. But then I, I got one afternoon with her, which was wine tasting in Crete, and we went off to this vineyard, and she said, "What? sit down and basically join in with... And so we were, And there was no... All I could say is we were, 
we were drinking the wine, we weren't tasting the wine. And <laughs> after about four glasses of this, this Cretion, well, it was quite fun. It was, you know, she was had a made a fun afternoon, which wasn't the same you as... You got hammered with Camilla. Uh, well, what, what, yeah, the cheese was nice. What is very important is that what she will really bring to Prince Charles is her own experience of an ordinary life. Although she came oh, from quite a... Really no, ordinary. although she came from quite a, a rich family, she was, at that very difficult time, a, a single parent, you know. She did her own shopping and she understands all the problems about congestion charge and taxes, which Prince Charles never has to do anything about because he's got his staff. So I think she's got a, a realistic side mm. which can really help him and say things about maybe uh, what he should and shouldn't do in a small way. Well, let's have one, one word about our current Queen at the moment, Richard. You apparently had a story in yesterday's diary. What can you tell us? What's the Poor Queen has been dealt a sort of bad hand by the Tories that have announced they're going to I mean, announce. The blows keep coming, don't they're they? They're going to announce the new leader of yeah. the Tory party on the 5th of September, which is in the middle of her um, cherished summer holiday at Balmoral. And it's very complicated because what they like to do is announce the leader of the party, who then becomes the Prime Minister, and you have all the choreography where they enter 10 Downing Street. But you can't do that until you've had the sort of kissing of hands with the the Queen, and that has to be done first. So what's going to happen? Is this um, new leader going to travel up to Balmoral and make an 800-mile round Which trip? Which one of those would you want in your castle? Uh, Tell me. <laughs> I yeah. think it's much more likely the Queen will be yeah. expected to come back, she will come back to yeah. London. Yeah, she will. Or, or if, if she doesn't, then we could have the possibility of Prince Charles doing the honours. But well, he, then that would be a huge step. It really would. He already stood in for the Queen at the state opening of Parliament. But for the, our head of state not to be meeting the new prime minister would be something else completely. I'm so, sure, I'm it depends sure on she'll how she feels. Though, I suspect know, the queen will come how, back. Do you think she will? Constitution. I think this is, I mean, a, a, a new prime minister, and absolutely, she'll be there. Well, yeah. watch this space, I guess, September 5. But that is all we have time for on Palace Confidential this week. My thanks to Angela Levin, Rebecca English, Robert Jobson, Richard Eden, and to you, of course, for watching. We'll see you next Thursday. Goodbye.